Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Out enjoying a beautiful cold walk this morning along the Wild Azalea Trail. And I want to check out a piece of gear that I got for Christmas. One of the pieces of gear that I got that I was most excited to get was the flat pack grill from UCO. I got the smaller of the two versions. Thankfully, my wife realized I probably would want the smaller of the two versions because I like to pack it and it's usually just me out on the trail so it makes more sense. So join me today as we take a detailed look at the flat pack grill from UCO. Thanks for watching, guys. So we'll start by taking a good look at this grill. Let's get this stuff out of the way. This is the pouch it comes in. It's really nice. That's kind of Cardura type pouch. It's got a nice uh, little leather envelope on the top. Looks pretty bushcrafty, so that's kind of cool. Comes in three components, I'll show you guys. So we've got the grill top. This fits right on top. I've used this twice and I actually cleaned it really, really well. And I'm glad this, you can see some staining here. I don't know if you can see that, but that's really all that's left. This was really charred and I like to keep my stuff clean, guys. This was really charred and I cleaned it up really well. So it, it worked well, that's good. This is like a little holder or a little lifter for this thing. You can grab it on the side like this and it allows you to move uh, this on and off without burning yourself. And then you've got the grill itself. It just folds out like this, all right? Pops open, you flip these bottom pieces like that and you've got your grill. Whenever you put this on, it slides on the sides just like that. Locks it in place very nicely. You can see the sides here. Fold it up, the dimensions are nine by eight by one and a half. When open like this, you have a nine by six and a half inch grilling surface. So nice large grilling surface. Again, this is the smaller of the two uh, pet grills, so you can get a bigger one if you're interested. It's made out of pretty high quality stainless steel. Of course, it weighs about two pounds. You're gonna expect that because it's uh, fairly decent gauge stainless steel, especially on the outsides here. These sides are, are a lighter gauge because they fold in. It's not only used for cooking, but you can also just use it as a fire pit. You can just keep this off and use this as a fire pit. It keeps fire off the ground, makes things very safe, which is nice. To fold it up, you just wanna undo these bottom like that, get them loose, close it up. And there you go, close down. It says on the side there, UCO flat pack portable grill and fire pit. Now first off, we need to find some firewood, get this thing going, nice bed of coals at the bottom here. We're gonna make some coffee and grill up some steak.
Mm. Arc plug. I've had my eye on this grill for a while, ever since I saw my buddy James over at the Junkyard Fox review the larger version of the flat pack grill. I knew that I would want the smaller version. If you want to check out the bigger one and kind of see the dimensions and see it in action, make sure you check down below. I'll leave a link to his video. I think it's a wonderful grill, all-purpose grill. You can use it backpacking. It's lightweight enough that you can actually do that if you want to. You can definitely use it bushcrafting. You can use it car camping. You can use it in the backyard if you really want to. I really like that you're able to keep the fire up off the ground. Today, I'm in the pine forest of Louisiana. There's a lot of hardwoods around here, but there's a lot of pine trees, a lot of pine duff. And even though it's been raining like crazy here and everything is super wet, and the chances of a forest fire are pretty much nil. It's nice to have the option to put the fire up off the ground so you don't have to worry about it at all. And like I said, you can just use this as a campfire. It's designed also to be used as a fire pit. So you can just have a nice fire around camp, not worry about what's on the bottom, not worry about catching things on fire. Just keeping things nice and elevated and enjoying your night. Fire safety is something that I harp on all the time. You see all these fires all over the place. There's fires in Australia now that were set by arsonists for some ungodly reason. You can have a forest fire that's started by nature, lightning, something like that, but most frequently it's caused by carelessness by people like us that go out there, start fires, and don't make sure that they're out. This really gives you a barrier of protection. You still need to be very careful, especially what you do with the coals left over. If they're not completely out, not completely cold, I would encourage you to absolutely let them burn to nothing to the point that you can touch the ash. If you can't do that, make sure you put plenty of water. What I did was let it go almost all the way to ash and then I just threw the ashes into the stream here. No chance of a fire whatsoever. Forest fires destroy thousands upon thousands upon probably hundreds of thousands worth of forest every year. So do me a favor guys, make sure you practice good fire safety out there. It's so important if we want to continue to enjoy outdoor activities in places like this into the future. This particular product seems pretty well built. Of course, I haven't used it for two years, guys. I got it for Christmas. I've probably burnt in it about 10 times. This is the second time that I actually cook on it. I like just using it as a fire pit and it worked really well during some hikes with my kids where the camera didn't come along. Stainless steel seems pretty well built. The hinges are really nice. It doesn't seem like they're gonna warp at all. I've seen some people say that if you expose the grill to too strong of a fire, sometimes it'll warp. I've had no issues, and the first couple of times before I heard that, I had that grate right on there while it was just blaring, so I didn't have any problems so far. I'll let y'all know if I do have any problems like that in the future. One thing to remember is that stainless steel gets super hot, guys. This isn't like titanium. It does not cool off really fast. I have it sitting over there cooling off right now. It's about 40 degrees, so it's going to cool off pretty quickly today, but just make sure you remember it's really hot. It's easy to burn yourself. It does not cool quickly, especially if you're in a warm environment. I don't know if you guys know, but I have an entire playlist on stoves. This will be probably stove number, I don't know, 47, 48 in that. It includes wood stoves, alcohol stoves, propane stoves, any kind of stove you can imagine, except for a solar stove, now that I think about it. We may have to get after a solar oven at some point. Nonetheless, check out the playlist with all my stove videos down below. I don't know exactly when this video is going to come out, but I'm going to tell you guys I'm pretty excited because in three days, we're going to Disney World. Like really, we're going to Disney World. We're pretty excited about it. We're staying at the Caribbean Resort and it's gonna be a lot, a lot of fun. I'm sure this video will come out way after we come back, but nonetheless, I'm going to Disney World. Do me a favor, guys, it really helps if you give the video a thumbs up. If you like the video, if you think I put it together nicely, if it's a quality review, hit the thumbs up. It really helps, like I said. If you wanna make sure you don't miss any videos, hit that subscription button. If you wanna be absolutely sure you don't miss any videos, hit that ding dong bell and you'll be the first to know when I release new videos. I am trying to enjoy the last little bit of cold weather here in Louisiana. I know that it's only mid-January, but it starts to get hot here pretty quickly, so I'm hoping for another four to six weeks of cold weather. I do have two overnight adventures planned before the warm weather hits. One is gonna be right here along the Wild Azalea Trail, hopefully, as long as the weather permits, and I'm heading up to Eagle Rock Loop try to do that in early March. So pretty excited about that. I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate the support. The channel has really, really done well lately. I've picked up a lot of subscribers, which is really nice, thanks to a couple of videos I put out recently. It's all because of you guys. I keep coming out here and I have a great time doing it. As always, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon.